We can't go through the whole seven because we have to pray. God is my witness on my honor. I tell you this as a man of God. A brother came to me. He has, been, he has had long-term employment. Then suddenly he got a job. Working on this job, it was a contract job. Role. Working on this role, in this role for about six months, suddenly one day they just told him to go. He was completely heartbroken. He didn't know what to do. He was, he was so vexed. Vexed in his spirit. So he came to me and said, Pastor, they've let me go. I said, and he's been hearing me speak about Leviticus 26 verse 10. Put it on the screen. This is what it says. You shall clear out the old because of the new. Not because they sacked you. You clear out the old. You tell them, I don't want you leave your old contract because of a new one. Not because they fired you. So, when I, when I, when I, when he said that to me, I said to him, I said, as I was about to pray for him, I heard in my spirit. And this is the only time I've ever done that. God has not instructed me that way again. I heard in my spirit that I should tell him to come back tomorrow and pray for him tomorrow. I was about to pray for him. And I heard in my spirit. So I told the brother, I said, brother, um, I didn't tell him all the details. I just told him, come back tomorrow, please. I'll pray for you tomorrow. I'm sure the brother wondered, what's wrong with you? Why can't you pray for me today? And sometimes we have to be very careful because we're moving. It might not make sense, but it makes spirit. So the brother, the brother left. When the brother left, I thought to my spirit, what, what, why, why that? What do I do? Maybe God wants me to fast and pray more. And suddenly I heard God say to me, I should go out and buy him the clothes he will use for his next job. So I went to Harry Rosen in, in Canada. I went to Harry Rosen. I bought a shirt. I bought a tie. And uh, I didn't have money to buy a suit, so I bought cufflinks. At least if he wears it up, he will show up at work. <laughs> <laughs> I, are you? I, <laughs> so I, I, I bought that and I packaged it together nicely for him. So when he came to my, I prayed about it. When he came to my office, he said, I'm Pastor, I'm here now. So I, saw, I, came, I said, No problem. I said, um, I got a gift for you. Here you go. Go and start work next week. He said, Huh? I said, Yes. Here is what you're going to wear on the first day you're going to work. I bought it for you already. Here you go. Go and start work. This is what God told me to do. No prayer. Go and start work. So the boy, after he was dazed for about 30 seconds, then he took it, was up. He said, thank you. Thank you, pastor. Could God be glory. If God has bought a shirt for me, then that means there is work for me. Go back home. As he was on his way home, on his house is about 35 minutes from the church. As he was on his way home, he got a phone call for an interview. He got a phone call for an interview. This was on a, on a Wednesday. He got a phone call for an interview. The interview was stated for Friday. So he was thinking to himself, Friday, I, I, it's not going to work. By the time he was still putting together, trying to go for the interview, by Thursday, he got the phone call that can he start on Friday. <laughs> the leading of the spirit. The leading of the spirit. The leading of the spirit. So we have all these dimensions in prayer. Not one size fits all. Let me give you one more, then we're going to start praying. So we've talked about asking. What's the second one? Serving God. And the third one? Sacrifice. And the fourth one? The fifth one I want to talk about, I will leave the remaining two until tomorrow. And I will elaborate a lot on the remaining two. The fifth one I want to talk about is declaration. Declarations. There are times in our lives when we have to, this is prayer now, when we are not praying to God the Father, we, have, we receive empowerment from God the Father. And based on that empowerment, we speak to the situation. The Bible, Jesus Christ is the one that taught this dimension of prayer. In Mark eleven twenty three, 23, he said, verse 22, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. He said, you shall, you shall say to this mountain. The mountain is not a demon. This is not warfare now. This is the situation. You shall say to this mountain. You shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. And if you do not doubt in your heart, the saying is easy. The doubting is the difficult part. And there's no way you will not doubt in your heart except the Holy Spirit is the one that led you into it. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. So you speak to the situation. You speak to the situation. Look at, look at um, Luke chapter 4, verse 35. 
Luke chapter 4, verse 35. This is Jesus now dealing with the demon. And the Bible says that Jesus' attitude to the demon was that he did what? He rebuked the demon. I want you to note that word rebuke. Verse 37. Verse 37. So he went to the, let's go on, verse 39. So, verse 39, they told him about the mother-in-law of Peter that had fever. And look at what Jesus did. What did he do? He rebuked the fever and it left her. So we see Jesus rebook the demon. That's warfare. But we also saw Jesus rebook the fever. The word rebook used in the first verse, 35 and 39, is the exact same word in Greek. He rebuked demon. He also rebuked fever. In other words, the same attitude Jesus had towards a demon in confronting it is the same attitude he had towards an unpleasant situation. You have been looking at that situation too long. Speak to it. Speak to poverty. Speak to it. Speak to the impossibility. Speak to it. Speak to the sickness. Command it. You saw Jesus speaking here. You speak to the situation. Stop saying, oh God, hear me. God has heard you. Speak now. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 to 6. Hebrews 13, verse 5 to 6. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. He himself have said, I will never leave you. Listen to this. He himself have said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So what do I do? So that you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. Look at it again. I want to show you something there. Hebrews 13, verse 5. Conduct without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. You have. He himself have said. What did he say? I'll forsake you. So that what is your own, what is going to be your own response? So that, verse 6, you may not just say it, but you may boldly say. Not just say it, but that you may now, now, what he said is I will never leave you. What are you going to boldly say? I will not fear. You don't even need to say exactly what he has said. Just say it in your own language. But the key is that you must boldly say it. Acts of Apostles chapter 14 verse 3. They abode there for a long time. And they boldly declaring the word of God. Boldly. Boldly. The ones we say in our bedroom when our wives or husbands are not there. When people are not there. And we say it little by little. I will be led by the spirit. I will be led. That's not what we're talking about. You say it boldly. Everybody's hearing you. This is going to be the best year I've lived to date. Now everybody's hearing you. Can you say something like that? Can you say something like that? Can you say something like that? You say it boldly. My potential will be maximized. My hope is restored. Now everybody is hearing and some people are laughing at you when they hear that. You don't have a child now but you are praying to God. You have done warfare. You have taken prophetic actions. Then you look at your hand and say, these hands will carry my own children. Now you are making bold statements. Somebody around you is looking at you and saying, yes hands. But the same people laughing at you they will come back. When you are doing your dedication in Jesus' house, DC, they will come and rejoice with you. Yeah. We'll share the remaining two tomorrow. Listen to me. We're going to pray in a few minutes. Let me say this to you. I was here at the gates of God last year, January. And I'm not saying this for flattery. This is not public relations. Sometimes people do that. I'm telling you a fact. Or my honor as a man of God and God is here. I left this place end of January last year. I was so fired up in this prayer retreat. I took a lot with me. But I took with me, number one, first thing, knowledge. I learned about what is happening here. I took the same spirit to our church. We started praying in our church like we have never prayed before. Something hits our church in the area of prayer. I left here end of January. Eight days or ten days after I left here, the Sunday, I think it was the Sunday, following Sunday I left here. Oh no, two Sundays after. February 8th, Sunday morning. I was reading my Bible in the morning. When, from devotion, that's my devotion. From Daniel chapter 2 verse 48, when God spoke to me. That serious promotion is coming. February 8th. I got to church that morning. February 8, 2015. And I said to the church, that serious, God just spoke to me this morning, that serious promotion is coming. And some people reacted the way you're looking at me. <laughs> That's where church people look at, people that are operating in faith. 
When somebody starts operating in faith, people that are operating in sight look at them, uh, you crazy? They were looking at me, just like that. Then after I said it about three or four times, they said, amen. Amen. Then the amen started filling up the place. And I said to them, my characteristic manner, whether you believe it or not, I don't know where it's coming from, but I know serious promotion is coming. And I, and I kept on declaring it. Now, God has spoken to me, but I needed to make a bold declaration outside in the church. 8th of February, I said it. 15th of February, I came back again. And I said, well, that thing I said last Sunday was not just for one Sunday. I'm saying it again. God spoke to me, and he said it's coming. Anyway, after I said that about two or three Sundays, some people have believed, some people did not believe. Exactly on the 30th of April, at 12.21 p.m., exactly, 1, 2, 2, 1, very symmetric, I got a phone call from the president of one of the leading universities in Canada, Christian universities. And he called me and said, is that Pastor Wally? I said, well, if it's good news, it's me. <laughs> and the man said, I'm the president of the college. We've heard so much about you and about what you're doing in the ministry and so on and so forth. And it's about honor. We want to present you for a honorary doctorate degree. I said to myself, I said, this is Pastor Wally. Pastor Wally, yes, this is Pastor Wally. <laughs> so the man said to me, the man said, um, <laughs> the man said, all right, that he just wanted to confirm with me that he would need my bio, my, my bio, really. And um, he would present it to the academic council, the board of governors, and about two or three other committees. And the board will make a decision. <laughs> I thought to myself, something that has been said to the neighbor. God spoke to me long ago. This promotion, it will come. So, this is a true life story. I called one of my daughters. I said to her, I said, you know what? If you're going to write two pages about me, about my life, what will you write? I said, the only two things you probably don't remember is just my date of birth and where I was born. I was born in a village. So just leave that place blank. But just write two pages about me. This girl went on computer, wrote two This is a true life story. Wrote two pages about me. She didn't even know what she was writing. By the time she put it together, two pages, I summarized it. I forwarded it to the man. This was April 30th, the man called me. By May 5th or 6th, the man, the man got the thing. When the man got it, he called me back. He said, this is one of the best I've ever seen. He said, I'm taking it to my academic council. By the, towards the end of the second week in May, the man called me back and said, it was a unanimous decision in the academic council. <laughs> now, it goes for like this. This man said to me, he said, he said June 6th, Will you be able to come and receive the award on the 6th of June? And he said, the whole faculty will be graduating. There are people that have spent seven years, eight years to try and get this degree. Um, doctors of ministry, doctor of divinity, doctor of oh, masters and bachelors. He said, but the person, they only give this honorary degree for doctor of divinity to only one person in a year. He said, and that one person will be the one to give the lecture on that year. He said, so, Pastor Wally, you will be the one speaking. <laughs> True life story. So, this is what I got from this place. It's one of the things I got from this place. He said, I'll be the one to speak. Listen to me. And he said, I have never been to a Bible school in my life. The highest I've ever been to is the foundation class. <laughs> and he said, I was going to speak before these people that have spent 30, 40 years studying this thing. And he said, I was going to speak on missiology and all manners of hermeneutics and homiletics and so on. <laughs> but you see, the God that gave the promotion always had to give the wisdom. I went to the place of prayer I received from God and I was going to speak on the topic, the paradox of the 21st century church. By the time I hit, when they introduced me, I hit the stage. I spoke for 15 minutes only. Number one, the man said to me, he said, since they gave that degree to T.D. Jakes, they have never had their hall filled that way. Our church people were there two hours before. <laughs> no place to sit for, for the people that will graduate. I told our church people, I said, once they introduce me and I hold the microphone, no matter what I say, no matter what is going on, just keep on shouting, keep on clapping, keep on shouting, keep on clapping, keep on shouting, keep on clapping. Somebody give him a shout! <laughs> Immediately they gave me the microphone, our church people, the place, they couldn't keep them silent. They just kept on shouting, screaming, shouting. When I said the paradox of the, they shouted. 
So all the faculties, all the powerful people there, they just look at me like, wow, this must be saying something that makes sense. <laughs> at exactly the 15th minute mark, I said to them, I closed this album by saying to them, ladies and gentlemen, and that is the paradox of the 21st century church. And the whole place erupted. <laughs> Listen to me. Like Pastor Jesus said, when God is leading you, you don't look like it. But God gives it to you on a platter. That thing, that one thing that God did for me on the 6th of June, the first Nigerian that got it was Pastor Yi Adeboye in 2011. I'm the second Nigerian that got that thing. The doors that it has opened for me in Canada is unbelievable. The number of people that call me, I mean, talking to the government, that will just pick a phone call and just call me or invite me to meetings. You know, I didn't even know those meetings exist. <laughs> you see those meetings and you get into the place, you think, eh? You mean people like this gather? What is my point? My point is this making bold declarations based on what God has told you. Stand on your feet like a champion. Now, first and foremost, if you believe what you are going to pray about tonight, if you believe God will answer you, I'm not saying you're guessing. I'm not saying you're hoping. You believe it that God will answer you. I want you to put your hands together. Clap your hands, all ye people. Come on, come on, come on. Shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Somebody give him a shout of hallelujah. I said a shout, not a whisper. Give him a shout. A shout. I saw something many years ago. Listen to me. Numbers 23, verse 21. He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob or seen wickedness in Israel. The Lord is God is with him. The shout of a king is among them. That is why sorcery and divination can also not work against them. How difficult can it be you are an able-bodied man or woman to shout? I know you're tired because you're coming from work all day. But now that you are in the presence of the almighty God and he's telling you that we're about to trigger something, that generations to come, they will be thanking you that you came to this service tonight. Are you ready? Are you ready? We're not shouting for just emotional sake. We're shouting because this is what God is commanding. In this minute, this is what God is commanding. Are you ready now? I'm asking, are you ready now? So clap your hands, all ye people. Clap your hands, all ye people. Come on, come on, come on. Then shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Come on. Somebody give him a shout. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. wake up tomorrow morning for many of you I decree and I declare as the Lord live it the rain that has not fallen in your life for three years as pastor has been speaking I take authority and I declare I hear because I'm hearing right now the abundance of rain I'm declaring right now over you may the rain begin to fall may the rain begin to fall May the rain begin to fall. 
Let's say to me, in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 24, the Bible says, Kaliya Baba, the power of God, just wait for The Bible says that Ben Adad, the king of Syria, came to besiege Samaria until there was a great famine. But the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1 to 2, Elijah said, Hear the word of the Lord. I'm speaking to you by the authority of the word of God. I'm speaking to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God that died on the third day he rose from the dead. He's seated at the right hand of God the Father. In like manner he will come again. I speak to you in his name. As the Lord liveth, may it rain an abundance of rain from tomorrow morning in your life. If you receive it, shout and live in him. We're not here to joke tonight. Kalabi shia kaya bakoso bitia. Mendomo shia karua dili atusa. Kandomi aku kabi aku lagita disi ataya. Manda koni aloto mi atusa ye. Keme go tomi aku na bita luzia. Kabole keni ando shia. Manda no mi tia lo disi ate. Keme redu ali kadi asataya. Lift your voice and begin to thank him in tongues. Thank him in your understanding. Malakadome has said, Aye, Eme Yege, Eme Yege, Eme Yege, Eme Yege. Come on, lift your voices. Yege la la ba ba osia. Enda la la ba ba. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Malete ne melebe baba bo Imaye ke meye Imaye kampata na ya lomo se Biole 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 Katele ke se Emento male me remeto matene Ibaye ka bo mate ke me Mira moto moto mile bete ze ye Mekendo, mekendo, mekendo. Omo konto belele. Omo konto belele. Omo konto belele. I can hear you. I can hear you. Elelele baba osia. Elentende le baba osia. Mandele le baba baba baba. Ia mandele baba osia. Kadome le besia. Thank you, O God. I thank you, O God. I thank you, O God. My prayers are answered. This weekend. My prayers are answered. I know you have called me. To him the answers prayer. To him all flesh shall come. I've come to you this weekend. I will not live the same way. I am sure according to your word. Malelelele. 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 Shentendere baba baba saye. Sasangon dole baba baba mataji ariadusa. Ima jantango no mo pede ne me retenesia. Are you praying? Are you praying? That's why you came here. Open your mouth. Lift your voices. Let the heavens hear you. My young guy. That's how to do it. That's how to do it. That's how to do it. Come on, be passionate about it. Be passionate. Let it come from your heart.